finally time to watch Spider-Man No Way Home. As you can see, I'm dressed for the occasion. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I, I unlocked it. Okay, I'm done. As you all know, I'm not a fan of Spider-Man Far From Home, but as soon as I saw footage of No Way Home, as soon as I heard the rumors that this movie was going to be a multiverse movie, I was in. Sure, Far From Home shattered me into a million pieces, sure I wanted to leave the theater when I watched it, but I love Spider-Man. It doesn't matter if the last movie was the worst thing ever, I will watch the next one because I am a simp. And so, it was time. I went into my AMC and watched Spider-Man No Way Home. In a packed theater in the middle of a pandemic, yep, people were absolutely ready for this movie, and by all means, good for them. This is Spider-Man. This is 20 years of film now inhabiting one screen, build up or not. And to be honest, while excited, part of that excitement stemmed from fear. I was scared. I was scared because Far From Home hurt to watch. Because the writers of Ant-Man and the Wasp wrote this movie, even though they wrote some episodes of Community, a show I love. Slut! Yeah, I was worried and so I'm so happy that in the end, I walked out of the theater overjoyed. I was going crazy to my parents, they were taking photos in front of the AMC. I called someone important to me wanting to freak out but couldn't because people were around me and I didn't want to yell spoilers. It was a euphoric experience. I was in a theater where everyone was cheering and clapping, there was a baby crying and people were pissed for a bit. It was crazy. I am so ready to talk about this movie and then later on make a spoiler video where I talk about what I believe the film means in the grand scheme of things, but as of right now, I am so happy. First off, the multiverse. These classic Spider-Man villains return, from newer villain Electro to original foe Green Goblin. We've got all these old bad guys, right? And you know what happens when you get older? That's right, hair loss. Guys, hair loss starts earlier than you think. 25% begin the process before age 21, and two-thirds of men experience hair loss by age 35. So we gotta talk about Bosley, America's number one hair restoration experts. And Bosley RX is here, a simple, convenient way to restore, regrow, and retain hair. Bosley RX can help you stop hair loss dead in its tracks with effective, FDA-approved treatment options from the trusted leaders in hair restoration. There's three affordable treatment options available depending on your your needs and preferences. You can simply complete an online survey from the comfort of your home, and a physician will evaluate your submission, and upon approval, your treatment will be delivered directly to you. No doctor's office visit is required. Learn how you can stop hair loss by going to bosleyrx.com slash brown table or click the link below to learn how you can get your first month free and free shipping. That's bosleyrx.com slash brown table to learn how you can get your first month free with free shipping. Spider-Man No Way Home? More like Spider-Man No Way Home because I'm still in the theater waiting for a new showing of No Way Home that I can sneak into so I can watch the movie again. Okay, but for real though, the main thing that popped out at me, other than the visuals, because the movie, like most MCU movies, is pretty lackluster in iconography or visual storytelling through color, the main thing that popped out to me was the direction. In the visual sense, the movie isn't necessarily the prettiest thing to look at, and if you disagree, listen, No Way Home has some great shots, but literally almost every shot from previous Spider-Man movies were just better all the time. Time. Anyways, the way the camera is directed, it feels like John Watts is actually directing this movie. Mostly gone is the extremely mediocre camera work from Far From Home. Yeah, in No Way Home, every scene is directed in an interesting way. Not just the fight scenes. The opening of the film has a near two minute long long take that carries us from room to room as Peter's life is crumbling around him, and at that moment, I knew. This shit's gonna slap. The only issue is that while the direction has improved, the film's script in the first act didn't really. I was sitting there in the theater and I was like, oh, you know, maybe I won't love this. As the way the Dr. Octopus fight ends is way more comedic than I was expecting. So I'm extremely thankful that by the second act, the movie improved rather dramatically. The comedy got to be too much at times, but everyone acted so well and the direction was such a vibe, I didn't mind at all. I'm also quite grateful that the villains weren't ruined. Well, if anyone was ruined, it was the lizard, because they turned him from a scary monster with purpose to a goofy goon with issues. Side note, why does the 2012 movie look better than a 2021 movie? Movie. That being said, Melina's Octavius, cinema. Fox's Electro, maybe too funny, but compelling. And Chad Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, perfection. Willem Dafoe is 100% the best actor in this movie, and he absolutely takes over every scene he's in, from being timid to being an over-the-top bad guy. I think his story in the original Raimi film is much better, obviously, because that's a whole movie dedicated to him. But I do think No Way Home makes Green Goblin a lot scarier and more intimidating, which is honestly a massive surprise. 
is. And the best thing about the goblin in this film is that he doesn't have his mask. And bummer, because the mask is cool, but because he's maskless when he's confronting Peter, you can see Defoe's full range of expressions and it's magical. Another great thing the movie was able to do was change its tone in the second act. It did so seamlessly and the mature direction the film took made me so damn happy. Look, I enjoy the homecoming vibe, but after two movies, I just I just want more serious drama and this movie delivered. It felt like the movie understood what being Spider-Man means. Finally. You know what's weird? All these videos I've made on MCU Spider-Man and how to fix them, all the issues I've had with Far From Home, Homecoming, it feels like the people working on this film watched all those videos, watched all the critiques from YouTube, and just decided, okay, we're gonna fix this, how do we do this, and they actually managed to pull it off. But more on that later. Back on what being Spider-Man means, see, Homecoming and Far From Home had glimpses of this. Aw oh, man, Peter can't do certain things because he's Spider-Man, but these things he can't do aren't life-altering. In No Way Home, the literal premise of the movie is that Peter is going through a life-altering situation because he's Spider-Man. And as the movie goes on, his life alters more and more and his situation becomes worse and worse. And going through this trauma, doubting yourself, not wanting to accept it but having to, and overcoming that trauma? That's what makes Spider-Man Spider-Man. The choice to do what's right. This is the first Spider-Man movie where Peter actually thinks about what's best for the villains, and he tries to connect with them on a personal level. Vulture comes close, but Peter never really tries to understand where Toombs is coming from. Not really. He only kind of acted on his words later on, but it's not like he really tried to reason with him, understand where he's coming from, everything that happened with damage control, etc, etc. And don't get me started on Far From Home where Peter never stopped to think that maybe Tony Stark was an abhorrent boss to Quentin Beck, despite Beck being crazy, the dude really needs mental help. In No Way Home, Peter tries to understand every single villain, why they are who they are, and does his best to help them. From what we've seen in the trailers, yes, Peter doesn't want these villains to die, he wants to help them. And that is the most Spider-Man shit imaginable. And through that responsibility, he gets hurt, he fails, and that's where that juicy drama comes in for the third act. The film's second and third acts make up for its tonally awkward first act. The first act of the film feels like it's trying to be homecoming, despite Peter having having to go through one of the worst moments of his life. Once the movie doubles down on the fact that Peter is in pain, does it become one of the best Spider-Man movies ever made? To me, is this better than Spider-Man 2, Spider-Verse, Spider-Man 1? No. But it is as good as Homecoming, and you know I love Homecoming to death. But guys and gals, while I dug Homecoming's pitch-perfect tone and writing, No Way Home's drama and emotional stakes are so incredibly exciting to watch. Especially considering MCU Spider-Man's last two films had pretty mild stakes. This time, it's all all about Peter. It's all about who he is and what he does. And let me tell you, the film's ending? I couldn't believe my eyes. It was actually happening. They were making a traditional Spider-Man movie again. It took three movies, but they did it. And I was euphoric. It absolutely felt unreal. Was this, was this a real movie I was watching? So like I said, No Way Home literally addressed everything that bothered me about Homecoming, and especially Far From Home, and made it work. It gave me Fast and Furious vibes, not in the way that you're thinking. I'm talking how Fast Five was able to reinvigorate the franchise, and make even the mediocre previous films essential, making them worthwhile. As much as I dislike Far From Home, the decision to double down on the film and make it matter has my respect. It's not a Rise of Skywalker situation where the movie's trying to tie up everything, but for some dumb reason decides to retcon a bunch of plot points from The Last Jedi, ultimately ending up making an embarrassing conclusion to a trilogy, as it's so focused on rewriting the story. No, No Way Home takes everything that has happened, good or bad, and makes it land. And that, I believe, deserves an applause. The film went full throttle with its theme of responsibility and owning up to your mistakes, and doing whatever you can to make sure you correct them. And in doing so, I believe No Way Home altered everything I disliked about MCU Spider-Man. It changed the character in a way I never thought would be possible, though I hoped would be the case. Yeah, I think No Way Home fixed MCU Spider-Man for me, and it made me smile in the end. I don't think I've smiled that hard watching a live-action Spider-Man movie in so long. The final few minutes of the movie are everything I ever wanted, and more.
Let's talk about spoilers and the future of MCU Spider-Man in another video though. In the meantime, check out Interstellar Ranger Commence, an animated series that I'm making on the channel. Link to the trailer is in the description, check it out. Thanks so much Robin Blue for this fan art of Hope Griffin from Interstellar Ranger Commence. I love your style, dude. Thank you so, so much. Make sure to get some crowd-made merch, the link is in the description. There's a bunch of IRC shirts as well as brown table shirts, so check it out. And thank you so much patrons for supporting me and supporting the channel, supporting Jacob and Nat, supporting IRC. It really means a lot, you guys help out a ton, so much love to you. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. How about you comment your thoughts on No Way Home so uh, the algorithm, you know, picks this up or something like that? And yeah, thanks for watching the video, and I hope you come back to the table. Just kidding. You're coming back. You're coming back for part two. This isn't a discussion. You just are. You are doing it. That's why you subscribed already, and turned on notifications, because you are coming back. So, I'll be waiting. See ya.